To associate the word miracle with an urban slum seems the work of irony, to say the least. But this is not a poor attempt at dark humor, because there actually was a notorious slum named the Court of Miracles in Paris, or La Cour des Miracles, to give it its French name. From the 13th century, and for hundreds of years, peasants were drawn here from all over the countryside, but those who found no work were forced to become beggars or thieves to survive. Unlike the Victorian slums of Great Britain that are familiar to us, the courts of Paris were a medieval phenomenon, though an equal source of human misery. The fact that there were so many of them reflects the desperate poverty of these unfortunate immigrant provincials. The area around Remur Street is well known for serving as inspiration for Victor Hugo's Les Miserables and the hunchback of Notre Dame de Paris. Hugo gave an atmospheric description of the La Cour de Miracle in the reign of Louis XI, 1461 to 1483. It was, apparently, a very large cul-de-sac of considerable size, evil-smelling, miry, and irregular with no pavement whatsoever. In this video, you will discover the reason for its unusual name, the squalid living conditions of its inhabitants, and the unscrupulous activities they are said to have been forced into, just to survive. Before we move on, please consider clicking the subscribe button for more content like this. If you find this video interesting, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up and share it widely with friends and family. You can also support the channel and get access to exclusive perks by becoming a channel member. Check out the Join button and description for more. These are the narrow streets of Paris today, the second arrondissement. Of France's capital city. Looking at the modern buildings of cafes, shops, and apartments, it is difficult to imagine that this was a completely different world in the past. A dark and seedy one, inhabited by the very poorest of society, the domain of the underclass. The Cour de Miracle was a stubborn feature in Paris's history, acting as a magnet for unemployed peasants and reaching its zenith from the 16th to 17th centuries. By that time, this refuge of beggars and vagabonds was said to have covered as much as a quarter of the city, since those with a clear disability could expect more alms a number of beggars faked terrible injuries and diseases. By the time they came back to their homes in the slum, they dropped their characters like a stone. A beggar who had pretended to be blind or crippled the whole day could see or walk again once back in the slum. This phenomenon gave the name to these areas where so many miracles occurred every day, and therefore courts of miracles. The French historian Gordon de Genulac gave the following disparaging description of its medieval streets and wretched inhabitants. Everything has been done in order to oppose an effective defense to the attacks of enemies outside the walls, but it was more difficult to guard against the enterprises of those within. The assemblings of the malcontents, which were held nightly, and those of the gentry of sack and cord, who, as soon as the gates were opened, set off eagerly to ravage the suburbs of Paris, returning in the evening to conceal themselves in the quarters, where no one scarcely ventured to go in search of them. The Cour des Miracles was the usual refuge of all those wretches who came to conceal in this corner of Paris. Somber, dirty, muddy, and tortuous. Their pretended infirmities and their criminal pollution. Henri Sauval, 1623-1676, described the court as a poverty-stricken district in his 
History of the City of Paris. To get to it, it is necessary to go astray in little streets. Villainous, stinking, crooked. To enter it, it is necessary to descend a sufficiently long slope. Torturous, rugged, uneven. I have seen there a house of dirt, half buried, tumbling to pieces with old age and rottenness, which did not cover a space of four square fathoms, sixty square meters, and in which were lodged nevertheless more than fifty households, having in charge an infinite number of little children legitimate, natural, or stolen. I was assured that in this little dwelling and in the others dwelt more than five hundred large families, piled one upon the other, large as is this court. It was formerly much more so. On every side it has been encroached upon by lodgings, low, sunken, dark and deformed, constructed of earth and of mud, and all of them crowded with the evil poor. The narrow and miry streets insinuating themselves between the hovels in wood, halting and crippled, turned and returned upon themselves, to end finally in a repulsive sewer. Neither air nor sunshine ever penetrated into these infamous alleys, from which escaped, at all seasons of the year, nauseating odours, and too often also pestilential miasmas. There vegetated in the most sordid uncleanliness the subjects of the kingdom of beggary. All that Paris illegally received in the way of mendicants, false cripples, false blind, false lepers, horrible to see, covered with ulcers, there wallowed in orgies, in frantic feasting, in gambling. Moreover, it should be remarked that the monks and gentry of the Cour de Miracle lived on sufficiently good terms with each other, and it would not be impossible that the name given to this enclosure came from the zeal with which the Argotier, speakers of a secret slang, cried, Miracle! every time that one was manifested within the streets of Paris. And we may say, by the way, that the miracles were frequently performed in their favor. Whenever the monks made some solemn procession, promenading through the streets, the relic of some saint, it was not uncommon to see a franc metou, those who are sick, or at least pretend to be, leaning on stick, bandaged and shaking, paralyzed, crippled or epileptic, endeavoring to touch the sacred casket. In vain would the attempt be made to keep him at a distance. He redoubled his efforts, and scarcely had he succeeded in gluing his lips to the sacred coffer, when immediately the cripple threw away his crutch. The epileptic ceased to foam at the mouth, and the astonished people cried, Miracle! The same author described how this society of begging thieves was divided into many classes, each with their own skill in acquiring money under false pretenses, or outright thievery. The orphanons were young boys who played the role of orphans to slip into houses to carry off whatever fell into their hands. The Marcandiers pretended to be merchants, ruined by war and so asked for alms on the streets. The Rifauds begged by means of forged certificates. The Malingreux counterfeited the most disgusting maladies and afflictions and sought out churches to implore congregants for aid to go on pilgrimages. Capon begged in the streets and in cabarets. The Pietres were false cripples, walking with the aid of crutches or pretending to be deprived of their legs. Polissons were a variety of capons, but utilized intimidation to achieve their ends. The Calo pretended to be recently cured of scurf and to have arrived from San Ren, where they had been miraculously cured of their ailment. The Franc Mitou feigned weakness on the streets, as if dying of hunger to gather money. The Houban exclaimed that they had been bitten by mad dogs and been cured by the intervention of Saint Hubert. The Sableux were false epileptics who simulated convulsions by means of soap between their lips, which made a froth. The Coquillades represented pilgrims returning from Saint-Jacques 
or some other pilgrim shrine. The Courtauld de Boutin were beggars during winter months who shivered with cold under their rags, and finally the Drills, or Narquois, begged in military uniform and declared that they had received wounds which prevented them from working. The Cour de Miracle was described as a kingdom of outlaws with a figurehead and hierarchy imitating royalty with three distinct classes, thieves, beggars, and vagabonds, the chief of which was called the Grand Cosre, and he was said to have carried a banner on which was depicted a dead dog, and like the King of France, he had a court and courtiers, an unofficial one of course, but one where officials feared to tread, thinking it better to leave a thief or assassin in this den in peace rather than risk taking him out. This perhaps seems, at face value, more fantastical than bounded in reality, and it's difficult to know where truth and fantasy collide. Perhaps there were instructors who specialized in teaching newly admitted individuals particular skills, like pickpockets might have in Victorian Britain. But could there really have been a structured hierarchy in this so-called kingdom of the underworld? No doubt there were professional beggars who were very adept at their craft. Moreover, it's not difficult to believe that a beggar, once safely within the limits of the Court of Miracles, was likely to be left alone by the authorities, if we are to believe the description of dark alleys, which were likely maze-like and dangerous to the unfamiliar, but a formal counter-society devoted to crime and thievery probably belongs more to literary fantasy of the like told by Victor Hugo. The court and the wretches within were seen as a constant threat to public safety. So great, in fact, it is told that in 1656, an army of archers and officers was apparently sent against it. Despite efforts to make an escape, the beggars were surrounded within. Of those arrested, some were sent to prison, others were released or sent to hospitals. It's unclear if this battle is historically accurate, though it makes for a good story. We can say with certainty that, as crime and destitution worsened during the reign of Louis XIV, Gabriel Nicolas de la Renée was tasked in 1667 with utilizing the fledgling prefecture of police to curb crime and the growth of the Court de Miracle. The court was destroyed on his orders, but it was later reconstituted, appearing on plans of the first third of the 18th century. Parisian authorities continued to reduce slum areas little by little. By 1750, a new tactic of improving health and social care became prominent over law enforcement, and great areas of the slums were demolished and taken over by fishmongers and blacksmiths. At New Year, the police tolerated, for the space of three days, the presence of professional beggars on the boulevards, from sunrise on the 31st of December until sunset on the 2nd of January, in swarms. In hordes, in legions, did Lazarus came forth. The inhabitants of the Cour de Miracle emptied themselves into the fashionable streets. The cripple, the paralytic, the tattered woman with the baby, the barefooted girl child, the patriarch with the long beard, the beggar without arms, the beggar without legs, mounted on a comrade's back. By the 19th century, the court was situated in one of the quarters of the city, which is the worst built, the most filthy, and the most out of the way, as if it were in another world. In these contemporary photos, you can see an access to the court from Passage Thévenot, now Rue Remur. In the foreground, a little girl is standing in front of a food store. In the background of this photo, you can see another access to the court, both photos are evocative of dark alleyways and a sense of the unknown beyond. The last vestiges of the old Corps de Miracle were eliminated with the redevelopment of the Fils Dieu convent during the French Revolution, Haussmann's demolition of the overcrowded medieval neighborhoods, and the renovation of Paris in the 19th century.